Hello and welcome to Vocal Bean, like award show type thing. Uh, first category we'd go with is art design, and so Dan, being the actual artist, I'll let you go first wow. for this. How kind. That's right. I'm putting you in it. Uh, art design wise, I decided to mm-hmm. choose Tyson Souls, which is an indie game that came out, and I guess it's kind of roguelike? In the sense that it's punishing, I, I don't know whether that. It's a- it's a game I have not. I, I don't know whether played. that term's really overused um, for this kind of stuff. It's like, oh, it's hard, so it's rogue. Like, no. But basically, imagine Dark Souls, but in a more top-downy, isometricy thing. It's it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be pictures on the screen. It'll be fine. I'll, Essentially, I just quite these. liked it. Like, yeah, no, looks it, wise, it does look given. It's obviously like stylized, but it has quite a nice palette to it, and it suits the game. Like but the overworld is yeah. not necessarily vibrant, but it's not really like sort of muted, I guess, and desaturated. But when you go into all the, I was about yeah, to say but when you go into the boss areas, like it's that. all like dark and all that crap. But fuck it, game design. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I like how it looks. It's pretty. Look at it, pictures. Yeah, 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 probably there at some point. <laughs> I like, oh, I just, I'll just draw a giant dick and you'll oh. like, oh, I really like the texture of this. Oh, it's so And great. then you'll feel bad. Uh, um, I can actually bad? decide on my art design one um, because I'm terrible. Um, so I'm going to just talk about two that I think look pretty. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so first of all is one that I don't think will be included in anyone's art design really, but I think should get mentioned nonetheless, which is uh, Gravity Ghost. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Um, it's, it's got like it's not it's not like the best drawn or the best like looks wise because it's, it's quite a painted kind of style yeah. but it's just it just it's a very clean aesthetic for what it what it is I think it's, got, it's nice and interesting as well yeah it's fairly unique don't know why and then the other one is is definitely not an indie game in any way should form is Orin Orin the Blind Forest yeah which of course had a giant budget behind it so of course looks has some very nice vistas yeah, so yeah, um, I haven't really got any other reasons why other than they look pretty, which I guess is what art design is at the end of the day. Pretty much, like the if it looks good, then that's yeah. probably what you're going for. <laughs> uh, best concept. So this is uh, it could be game mechanics. It could be it's pretty much going to be game mechanics, isn't it? Really, it's going to be like so. It's something that's kind of weird and different and might actually influence something later down the line. Essentially, mm. do you want me to start or do you want to do you want to kick in? Well, given that I started last time, I think I should only do you the same credit. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go for Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, <laughs> which is possibly the most interesting game that came out of this year. Hmm. Because, I mean, and if you didn't know, don't know what the game is, essentially one person will have a manual, um, which can be either PDF, like, downloaded, or actually is a physical thing, yeah. and the other person has a bomb, which does actually work with VR, which is quite nice. Yeah, you can um, use the Oculus with it. Yeah, and so basically this bomb will have like things on it. So it might have like a keypad which you have to enter certain things, or wires you have to cut in a certain order. Uh, the person disarming the bomb has no idea what any of these things actually do. The person with the manual has overcomplicated, really long-winded ways of diffusing in each individual part of the bomb, and so they have to tell the person who's actually got the bomb in front of them what they need to do. And so it's kind of like this. It's like one of those games you play where someone's blindfolded and you have to tell them where to move. It's kind mm. of like that mechanic. Only if you fail, you die. Yeah, and, and, and some levels have other things trying to distract you, like alarms and shit like that mm. going off. But as the concept goes, I mean, I think it's the it's the blindfold walking thing, the, the interesting part of it. Yeah, it's quite a unique way to sort of interpret multiplayer and co-op. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. this year has been a really good year for interesting multiplayer stuff. Cause, I mean, you have the Jackbox stuff going on, you have this going on. Mm. Um, there's probably other examples I can't think of the top of my head. <laughs> or just ways of doing multiplayer involving, not just involving shooting each other in the head, but actually, like, mm. we're either working together or working against each other, but in a way that it- makes you think. Okay. Um, for me, in terms of concept, uh, the game is going to be the beginner's guide. I don't know if Amos will actually know what this uh, is. I do know what it is very vaguely. Mm, it is a game made by the same fella who made the Stanley Parable. So obviously, it's going to be it's there. Only one of them, isn't it? Concept-wise, yeah, it's only one of the fellas. Yeah. But nonetheless, there was involvement in that, and it's basically a game about game design. So it's meta mm. in that respect, and I get to be all pretentious and fucking artsy. Um. And yeah, I just like the way it played out. It, it was interesting, like the Stanley Parable is interesting, you kind of have to play it to know why. And even then saying it, I don't want to fucking spoil it. But essentially, <laughs> yeah, it's just in the gameplay. Like, you play through it, 
and it's got a really good narrative. Thanks. All right, next uh, next award is best multiplayer. So this could be anything multiplayer. You can go first this time. Prick. <laughs> wow. So in terms of multiplayer, it would have to be Rocket League. I would. I, I'm gonna have, go ahead and t- spoil that. I also agree and put that down <laughs> as my best multiplayer. So just because just it's quick to get into. Essentially, it's fun. I mean, the main reason I think it's so great is it basically smashes games like FIFA out of the water. <laughs> like, well, I mean, like, there's, there's driving, there's no, I'm, I'm seriously honest about it. Like, it, it, because FIFA, you press a button and you kick a ball. Mm. There's no actual tactile, yeah, contact between it. It's, I mean, it's all a program doing it. It's numbers and like. Algorithms, uh, I, I know what you mean. Games. You're not really controlling too much hey, look, of what's you're going playing on. You're playing Messi. You press yeah. kick, or it went in the goal because you're Messi. Like, <laughs> where Rocket League is, there's a ball in front of me. It's flying through the air. Okay, I need to work out what speed I need to be going and how I need to jump to hit that ball where I want to hit it. Mm. Like it's actually more like real football than FIFA is, and it's a fucking game about cars. Yeah, th- yeah that's that's a really fucking weird um, way to look at it. But it's true. You're in a car. You're hitting a giant football that blows up when it gets in the goal. But it's more in tune with what football is than the game that's designed to be football. Yeah, and that's why it's a great multiplayer. Because I mean, weirdly enough, football quite a multi multiplayer sport. Mm. You need you need two teams, and it it, it kind of works with that. I mean, you need someone in goal because if anyone knows what they're doing in Rocket League, they can hit a ball in an open goal. Hmm. So it ends up with having that teamwork that's actually quite quite needed. Like playing with puppies in that game is awful. <laughs> awful. It's one of those games that's really fun to play with friends because you can mess about a bit, you can do stupid shit and kind of go, yeah, Dan's a prick, he sucks at the game. And then Whoa. laugh. Laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd rather not, but okay. <laughs> but you get where I'm coming from, though. Yeah, I do see where you're coming from. Yeah, it's really it's is. a pretty simple thing. It's very solid in its gameplay. It's very quick. It's very snappy, and it's enjoyable. Their soundtrack. Um, do you want to go first this time, or should I? Uh, well, you were first last time, technically. Mm. So okay. So my choice of best soundtrack is kind of a little bit of a cheat because it's, <laughs> but it is completely new music, so it's fine. It is the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth? Ah, uh. because they redid the music again <laughs> from. Um, from the last Binding of Isaac. I can't show you any of it because uh, they'll get copyright strike. But go listen to it because I think Rebirth for me made the music worse than the original Binding of Isaac. Afterbirth basically fixed that. They went back from a lot, like Rebirth went for kind of a more minimalist, bit weird kind of stuff where, I mean, the original I- Isaac was just kind of cool Super Meat Boy type stuff. So it was like cool guitars mm. and shit like that. Arbor- Afterbirth goes back to that. So for me, it just sounds a lot better. Yeah. Music. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing really much I can do about that. I mean, yeah. soundtrack is one of those things. I, I mean, I would never want to put in a game like Metal Gear. Like, Metal Gear is an amazing soundtrack, but that's because it's 80s like hits like Take On Me and The Man Who Sold The World. Mm. Yeah, they're good songs. Because they're good songs, not because they're... It's, it's just yeah. happened to be in the game. They just happen to be there. It's, like, the, if you were to pick Metal Gear Solid, you'd kind of have to put it as the ambient stuff and... Yeah, it's like you yeah. can't put GTA Five as best. Yeah, it's <laughs> just a number year. of songs from the fucking radio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what's your what's your pick? Uh, my Metal pick. Gear Solid Five. <laughs> oh, man, uh, no, my pick is actually Fallout Four. Okay, I'm gonna say that I like it in the sense that it provides a very good sense of exploration. Like they handled it in a way. Oh, so you don't need provides... the radio? No, not the radio. No, okay, no, no, so no, I was no. probably talking about the radio and I was going to have a go at you. So no, I'm on, I'm, I don't use the radio, and the reason is because I really like the soundtrack, because it's incredibly atmospheric. Like, it does a very good job when you switch between different zones, when going in between exploring combat buildings <coughs> and all this stuff, because it has set tracks for sort of each one that it cycles through. Mm. And the exploring is very sort of, I guess, calm in a way, which contrasts like the environment. It's I, like I really do nice feel to go about in. there's not enough ambient music in it, in my honest opinion. I found that I would get, I would hear the same thing over and over and be like, I do agree in some areas, way. like in um, when it typically plays the indoorsy stuff. Like if you go into a building, it'll typically play like the same one, or they'll all have like the same sort of structure but different variations. Yeah, and that can be really grating and wearing but all the like stuff from the outside explorer bit which is what you're doing mostly in that game is pretty damn stellar cool okay biggest surprise of the year 
So this is the game that you played and either you were really let down by it, you're like, oh, I thought this was really good, it was actually shite, or a game, you know, that honestly made you feel, well, this is actually a good game. Huh. Hmm. I'll, I'll you go first, is, why not? <laughs> That's why not. Mm. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to go with both, actually, a disappointment and a good one, um, just because I can. Oh, you prick. I know, right? I'm trying to get um, more airtime, that's what this is. <laughs> I haven't had much, to be fair. Um, but overall, is a disappointment. I would have to go with Evolve. Because that game was hype as fuck. That game seemed great. It seemed like it was going to be awesome. I, I wanted it. I, well, yeah, it was like uh, Big Citizen or Giant Citizen Computer, which is a good game. Yeah, like the, uh, the beta seemed alright, but I enjoyed the beta. Oh, no, the, I hated the beta. I, I enjoyed played, it at that point, but I that's because... I played 10 minutes, <laughs> I followed the dog for about a minute and went, nah, this is boring. <laughs> Ran off on my own, then <laughs> everyone was like, no, we're following the dog, and I'm like, I'm not following the dog. Then I went and died to the monster. Maybe that's because you didn't do what you meant to do in the game. Uh, well, uh, follow the monster around for 15 minutes. Yeah, and that is fun. the main flaw, and that's why it was bad. That's why in the very close circumstance of a beta, I was like, oh, this is, this is alright, and then when it came to actual release, and I saw all the stuff and the fact that there was nothing really else to it I was like oh mm. again like Titanfall similar case just Titanfall was better though. <laughs> but even so it still had the same pitfalls it was still just ultimately the same thing over and over and there was yeah. no single player but at least Titanfall wasn't walking around for 15 minutes twiddling your thumbs well maybe people like following a dog's <laughs> ass and then um, surprise wise just in terms of something that was very good I quite liked and bear in mind I haven't played it yet I've merely seen content had to be boyfriend <laughs> yes those pigeons big surprise um, no surprise wise would be Undertale just in because of its mechanics and how it goes about I things I haven't played it so I don't I can't you can't really make comment on it but basically I haven't, I haven't looked at any of the spoilers or anything from it no I've um, been watching content of it however I have yet to play it and um, mechanics wise it's sort of old school RPG but you kind of progress through either befriending or killing the monsters. Yeah. Yeah. Which I just quite like. <laughs> it's just kind of dumb. <coughs> My biggest surprise, I'm only doing a thing that impressed me because I'm a positive person, Dan. <laughs> Even though I said I hate Involve. Um, <laughs> My biggest surprise was actually Until Dawn. Because I'm, I'm not a console pleb. I play PC games. So when a game comes along, it's on console and looks like could be just a bad knockoff of a David Cage game, but then turns out to be the best David Cage game there's been ever. Uh, but it's not even by David Cage. It's David Cage, right? I'm not messing up. I'm pretty sure, maybe. Hopefully, it's David Cage. It's something Cage anyway. The guy Nick who does Cage. all the like, yeah, Nick Cage, <laughs> him. No, the one who does like Indigo Prophecy slash Fahrenheit yeah. and uh, Heavy the Rain. One, whatever it was called, the Heavy Rain, and the newer one, which sucked. Um, but basically, Until Dawn was is basically a B movie that you control. It's not horror really. There's horror elements, but it's not horror. It's more, it's more like an interactive film, which, which is actually really interesting as a concept in its own, in its own right. But it's the fact that you know everyone thought this game was gonna kind of be a bit of shit, mm. and ended up everyone cared about these fucking teenagers in the cabin getting killed by the psycho, <laughs> and you're like, I want all these kids to survive now. <laughs> I'm gonna try and figure there's, out what's going there's on. A big old switch ended, up being, ended up being a really fun game. I mean, a lot of the choices people figured out afterwards are, you know, actually not proper choices. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. But that's the same for all choice type games. But for one playthrough, damn fun. Damn fun. Yeah. So that's, that's that one. Off. Um, so we're gonna go on to our, 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 our most serious award now. Oh, um, yeah. Like the one that I, I think I might even stop the music for. It's that serious, now we need to make sure we talk about this in a serious yeah. manner. And that is, what's the best sex scene in video games this year? And I think there's only really one contender. Yeah, I think I, we both came to a unanimous decision, really. It was. Very quickly. Mm. <laughs> and that is the Witcher 3 unicorn sex scene. Oh, yeah. Dan, if you'd like to elaborate. It's not having sex with a unicorn. <laughs> don't oh, don't worry, there'll be mods for that. Um, God. Essentially, you. Geralt, Geralt, however you want to pronounce it. Geralt. Is mm. I'm telling you how I want, you asked me how I want to pronounce it. Oh, right, okay. You, you could pronounce mm. it any other way if you wanted, to be fair. That was quite oh, an open ended question. But um, essentially, you uh, you mount on top of a unicorn and uh, you basically have sex. That, that, that's, mm. that's pretty much what it is. Bear in mind, the unicorn is stuffed, it's dead. 
It's tax demised. Oh. <laughs> you don't ride along on no, the Unicorn into the Sunset, Velma and Louis style, but um, no, you, you it, as we say, you fuck on a Unicorn. You don't fuck the Unicorn, you fuck on it. Mm, which is, I think is yeah. impressive. So, the most... <laughs> <laughs> Moving on swiftly. Uh, the game you played most this year. So this doesn't actually have to be a game that came out this year, but uh, hours wise. And I mean, for me, it's the one that will probably be every year for the next, for the last two years and the next three probably. It's just Hearthstone. Fucking hell, Hearthstone. <laughs> if I open up a video on YouTube, what am I playing? Playing Hearthstone while watching the video on my other monitor, like <laughs> watching TV or like The Apprentice or something. Just open up Hearthstone and just play a bit of Hearthstone while watching it, why not? It's just one of those things that I just do while doing anything else. It's kind of mindless. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll probably, I mean, I can't actually look. There's no way on Battle.net to look at hours <laughs> I spent, unfortunately. However, I can um, imagine it is a lot. It's, in the, this year, it's probably been, it's probably in the thousands. Let's, let's not kid around. It's probably in the thousands. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of depressing. Oh, don't worry. You're you're safe from the depression that is game time because I think I trump you yeah. on that. Yeah. <sighs> My most played, as we segue into this, would have to be Dota 2. Given yeah. that currently, on record, I have played 3,531 hours. Yeah, but that has been in like that four is years. in four years. However, for this year, I would probably say good 1,400 of that is probably this. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of data. Yeah. So at least I'm doing other things while I'm not Exactly, really whereas I'm just getting abuse hurled at me by people who I don't understand. Mm, yeah, no, it would be too depressing to play that much of it in a year. Mm. <laughs> I'll play the odd game. <laughs> you'll, play, you'll play the happy game with nice da 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 I mean, that, that will finish that off that category because we're, we're running quite, quite, quite long as it is, and I'm, I want to go to bed. Um, <laughs> so we'll move on to the last category, which is, of course, the most important one. I mean, over the sexy one, obviously, which is the best game of the year, which I think I'm going to have more of a say in than Dan because I've played more games. Um, so I'm going to go straight off and just say, hands down, best game of the year, Metal Gear Solid 5, which I think is actually a different one to most people's. I think most people will be putting down Witcher 3 as their game of the year. But I actually didn't think Witcher 3 was that great, but that's just me. I thought it was a bit boring. Um, which I'm sure I'll get a lot of hate for if anyone actually watches this video. Um, <laughs> but Metal Gear for me, I mean, I haven't actually completed it because I haven't had enough time. There's too many big games and I have too much on in my life. I know what a fucking <laughs> I am. Um, to actually play all through any of the games. So I haven't played all through Fallout, I haven't played. Or Metal Gear Humpet or Witcher 3. So maybe the games get better at the end, who knows? Who cares? Metal Gear Solid 5 though, first like 30 hours are near perfect. Like in terms of gameplay, like I mean story wise, man, you're a guy who's getting revenge, whatever. Gameplay wise though, near perfect. Like the most fun I've had in video games in a long time. Like much better than last year's game of the year, Dragon Age, fucking hell. Like mm. I mean you you get in, you do your stealth stuff, but it's in an open world, but it feels it feels like an open world that actually... I mean, um, Witcher 3 is the best open world I've played. No, has, no questions asked, but Metal Gear has... I feel like it has more to do in it. Uh, Witcher yeah. 3 is more populated. But Metal Gear, you kind of... You get to actually do more shit in the world, even if it is just like enemy encampments. Each encampment is something is more fun. You come across one, you're like, sick, this is actually cool to do. I'm going to sneak in, I'm going to take that guy out. Crick his neck and long behind a dumpster. Um, I'm gonna nick that guy because that guy's probably good. He might be good on my base. Oh, there's a cow there. I want him for my zoo. <laughs> and then you just and the fact the game doesn't take itself seriously. The fact that my helicopter plays take on me as I fly into metal and as it click collects me up. Like it's it's perfect. After you do a full on stealth mission and then you call your helicopter just outside the enemy base and it, da, 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 da 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 and all the enemies are like yeah. And also how you right. can go back to home pe home base and stare at quiet ass what? <laughs> yeah, that one. Uh, or the fact you go back to home base and then you punch your guys in the mm. face and they're like, Thank you, sir! Again, I can't make any comment on this because I have not played the game. Which is a game you I need, do to, need play to play. I do need to play it. It's also incredibly good looking as a game. Like, gra graphics wise, like text wise, meh. But lighting wise, they've done a good job. It's one of those games, if you looked at it 10 years ago, you'd be like, That's a cutscene. 
that's just a long cutscene. No, that's actually a video game in this day and age. Mm -hmm. Which is, I think, is impressive. So yeah, Metal Gear Solid V. Good game. Great. Great. Unless the, apparently it gets a bit bad in it. <laughs> who cares? Because I haven't got to the end. So for me right now... Don't yeah. let a shit in the middle of your chocolate cake spoil the experience. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I haven't got to the shit yet, so it's exactly. fine. You're still enjoying what you assume is frosting. Anyway, game. best game for me, I mean, I don't have much choice, but <laughs> best game for me would probably be Fallout 4, and that's because I'm an absolute fucking fiend for RPGs. Then why are you playing Fallout 4? Oh! oh! And by oh! RPGs... It's funny, because it's not an RPG, it's a fucking first-person shooter. First -person it's like, it's shooter. more like Diablo. Than yeah, but I enjoy Diablo as well, and that's the thing. It's a loot game. It's a fucking loot game. I'm a fucking right, glutton for <laughs> that depressing. stuff. Like, there'll be a man who says to go to the farm and, like, punch another dude because he's stolen his son or something like that and I don't give a shit if that's monotonous I will go there and I will punch the man get those bear axes. exactly like five of them just it doesn't matter but even then like in terms of the story or what I've done of it so far um like <laughs> please I just haven't got through it yet I'm still in 20 hours into purple I'm like probably two days into it by now and I've probably done like five story missions because I'm dumb that one but <laughs> essentially um, just, yeah. It's, it's great. Yeah. I love it. It's, it's a nice, it's a nice casual game, <laughs> is the way I put it. I mean, I'm not saying that in a concerning way, I generally think it's one of those games you can jump into, spend 30 minutes, and actually no, feel like you've done I, I would, something. I would agree with that, given that a lot of the times I will load it up, and I will, like, go clear out a place, or I'll go do one quest or something, or part of a quest, and I'll go for a few places, I'll loot stuff, and I'll head back to Red Rocket, where I've got my stuff set up. No, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at the sanctuary. No, I left behind those bozos a while ago. I recruited a bunch of people and gave them all tuxedos. But, um, essentially, <laughs> I go back to Red Rocket, and then, like, usually by that point, someone will have messaged me and asked me to do something else. So I'll do that. Don't exactly, know. pretty <laughs> so much. You can so that I can feed my other fucking addiction. But, yeah, <laughs> like, I, I will essentially do something, and I'll go back, and I'll feel like stuff's been accomplished, as you say. Yeah, it's, it's a fun game. But, I mean, compared to other games, I wouldn't even put it... I'd probably put it in my top five. Mm. But it's the fact that it doesn't hold you. Like, I, I mean, I played it for, like, three hours the first time I played it, like, in a row. But after that, it was, like, slowly less and less. I mean, I'd just get either bored or annoyed at various things. Whereas, you know, going back to my game, because I'm going to steal the show... Um, Metal Gear Solid, I, the first, like, ten times I played it, I would play, like, do all-night sessions. I'd be like, all right, start playing at nine o'clock. I'll finish at like one or two, <laughs> because you just get into it. and You're like, oh, I'll just do one more big mission, <laughs> and you're like, oh, now this is a really cool thing. I've got to scout this out, and you're slowly like fucking crawling around, and that takes a long time, but it's all interesting. Where a lot of Fallout stuff is, there's little bits of interest, mm. and then a lot of gubbins in the way that you have to get through. A lot of bits and pieces. Yeah, it's kind of it's a very bitty game. But I mean, there's a lot of fanboys to that game, so whatever. They'll probably love it. I'm sure it'll win Best Game of the Year, no matter what. Actually, I think Witcher 3 did, actually. At the Game Awards. Yeah. The real ones, Witcher 3, Game of the Year. <coughs> Which I think is the majority of people's Game of the Year. But for some reason, just didn't click for me. The game did not click. That's another story <laughs> for another time. For another video, which probably won't appear. Why I don't like Witcher 3 as much as most other people, but I still think it's a good game. What a great title for a video. Indeed. That's that's not a run-on sentence at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would really well in a video, and that would be really good post Reddit. Everyone will click on it, because like, that sounds like a really interesting thing These to watch. These people know what they're going on about. Mm. So yeah, that's our, our award show, our really shit, half, half really, like, you know, we... We organised this award show an hour ago, and we've been talking for 20 minutes. <laughs> so, I mean, we didn't... <laughs> so, it's also 3am, but ignore that yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. I've got work tomorrow as well. Um, so that's why I need to go sleep, so I'm not dead. <sighs> but, you know, I think I think as our first award show... Um, I mean, it wasn't going to be an award show, but Dan, Dan forced it into being it. He was like, no, we're doing awards. <laughs> we're this good now. We're good enough to do awards. That's what Dan said to me. <laughs> He was like, no, Amos, I'm putting my foot down. We're doing an award show. I'm going to wear a suit while I'm doing it. He's wearing a suit right now. He's clad up. Oh, yeah. I've, I've done everything. He's got no trousers on, but he's it's got It's like jacket. when you have a Skype interview. <laughs> Business <laughs> yeah. in the top, nothing on the bottom. 
girlfriend is at a party in the bottom of something. But yeah, no, that was that was. Oh, no. Basically, he's got his junk out, yeah. and the, the thing is, the bad thing about the interview is he's got his like laptop on his. Yeah, desk. it's like pointing down so a little bit. Straight. No, it's pointing down ever so slightly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so they can like. So see then, it. when you when they tell you you got the job, you can see something pointing at <laughs> <in> the view. <laughs> no, yeah. it's his hand because he's giving exactly. him a thumbs up. You, you dirty fucks! Why yeah. you thinking that? Gross. <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have too. Oh, cheers, Dan. Yeah. Thanks. I, I Thanks fucking didn't. Like I was. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Oh god! All right. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.